Hi, in this series of clinical and forensic toxicology, the first topic is mineral acids and caustic alkalis. Mineral acid or inorganic acids are derived from inorganic compounds that that is from the earth's crust. For example, H2SO4, HCl and nitric acid. Whereas caustic alkalis are strong corrosive alkalis, especially a hydroxide of an alkali metal. For example, NaOH and KOH. Now both these mineral acids and caustic alkalis are strong corrosive poisons, which when diluted act as irritants. Their action is mainly localized, that is on the elementary tract or respiratory tract, though systemic action is also possible, which is ma majorly shock. Now these corrosive poisons have mainly three actions, extraction of water from the tissues, coagulation of cel cellular proteins and conversion of Hb to hematin. Now in case of toxicity, the symptoms are immediate. We have divided the symptoms into four groups. The fourth group is not actually real, we have just included it for the sake of remembrance that CNS symptoms are not there and con consciousness is retained by the patient till the end. GIT, respiratory tract and systemic side effects. GIT includes burning sensation, intense thirst, difficulty swallowing, continuous vomiting, corrosion of mouth, lips or trickle down the neck, swollen tongue. Now if an acid is used as a poison, there will be constipation and scanty urine, which is basically a urinary tract symptom. While when an alkali is used, it causes tenismus and blood and mucus in the stool. The late symptoms or late effects are stricture of esophagus, malnutrition, stricture of pylorus or larynx, pulmonary edema, etc. Now the respiratory tract symptoms include dyspnea due to edema of the glottis, especially in strong fuming liquids and small quantities can also be inhaled resulting in hypostatic pneumonia. Systemic symptoms include shock, cold clammy skin, pale face, sunken eyes due to dehydration, dilated pupils and feeble pulse. Now what causes death in such poisoning? First of all, shock. Secondly, suffocation due to edema of glottis. And thirdly, perforation of stomach which leads to peritonitis. Now treatment includes two major factors, no stomach wash and no emetics. These are absolutely contraindicated in corrosive poisoning. Although soft gastric tube which is known as Levine tube is passed for aspiration to prevent serious caustic burns. When an acid is used, alkaline carbonates such as sodium bicarbonate should not be used. Weak alkalis, egg, albumin, milk etc. can be used. When an alkali is used as poison, we give weak acids such as vinegar. For pain relief, we give morphine to relieve thirst, ice sucking, IV fluids are given and steroids for shock and to prevent esophageal stricture. Tracheostomy is done to keep the patient breathing if edema of glottis is increased. If the patient unfortunately dies, then the post-mortem appearance will include, include corrosive signs of burns, perforation of stomach and in case of volatile poisons, irritation of the respiratory tract. Now the medical legal aspects of corrosives is that they are not used for suicide because it is very painful, though it can be used for homicide. Accidental poisoning does also occurs. 
Another important medico legal aspect which is vitriolage means throwing of any corrosive on a person with malicious intent out of jealousy, hatred or vengeance to seek revenge. Sulfuric acid, nitric acid and carbolic acids are also sometimes used. The burns are brown or black in case of sulfuric acid vitriolage and yellow in case of nitric acid. Trickle marks are also seen. Immediate treatment should be given who is to the victim, washing with loads of water, soap and then applying a magnesium oxide paste. Antibiotics should also be given to save the eyes from damage. Punishment of vitriolage is about 7 to 10 years of jail and fine paid to the victim.